हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रोफेसर राजेंद्र कोरन ने फ्रॉम माय यूट्यूब चैनल टीच इजी नाउ इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस यू द एम सी क्यूज ऑन द टॉपिक कॉलम्स एंड फूटिंग्स ऑफ डिजाइन ऑफ आरसी स्ट्रक्चर्स एज यूजल आई विल बी एक्सप्लेनिंग द करेक्ट आंसर ऑल्सो so without wasting the time let us start question number 1 the column is said to be short if its slenderness ratio is a equal to 12 b less than or equal to 12 c greater than or equal to 12 and d any other value now in this question the meaning of short column is asked so when the slenderness ratio that is the ratio of effective length to the least lateral dimension of the column is less than or equal to 12 that column is said to be short and hence the correct answer of this is b less than or equal to 12 question number 2 the actually loaded column is designed for the minimum eccentricity of a 30 mm b 20 mm c 25 mm and d 15 mm now we know that even if we are designing a column as an actually loaded column due to some particular reasons there may be some eccentricity which should be accounted for and such an eccentricity is calculated as unsupported length upon 500 plus h by 30 or 20 mm whichever is more okay hence the eccentricity for which a column is designed is 20 mm okay hence the correct answer of this question is b 20 mm question number 3 the minimum eccentricity for an actually loaded short column 450 mm by 450 mm shall not exceed a 20 mm b 15 mm c 18 mm and d 22.5 mm now according to is 456 2000 the actually loaded column shall be designed for minimum eccentricity and that minimum eccentricity shall not exceed 0.05 h that is h by 20 now here the value of h is 450 mm so 450 upon 20 will be 22.5 hence the correct answer of this question is d 22.5 question number 4 the effective length of a column is the length a between the points of contraflexure of a buckled column b between the ends of the column c unsupported length of the column d none of the above now effective length we know that it is the length of that portion of the column which behaves as if it is hinged okay and those two hinge points are nothing but points of contraflexure so the correct answer is it is the length between the points of contraflexure of a buckled column hence the correct answer is a between the points of contraflexure of a buckled column question number 5 for a column effectively held in position and restrained against rotation at both ends the effective length is a 1.5l b 0.8l c 0.65l and d 1.2l now this is nothing but effectively held in position and restrained against rotation at both ends means in simple language fixed at both ends hence the correct value of effective length is 0.65l so the correct answer is c 0.65l question number 6 the cover to the column shall not be less than a 40 mm b diameter of largest longitudinal bar c greater of a and b and d 25 mm now the minimum cover for the column should be 40 mm or 
the diameter of the bar whichever is more hence the correct answer of this question is option c greater of a and b question number 7 in case of column of side 200 mm or under reinforced with 12 mm diameter bars the nominal cover is a 40 mm b 20 mm c 15 mm and d 25 mm now it is given in is 456 that if the saw column side is 200 mm or under and it is reinforced with 12 mm diameter bars then the nominal cover can be reduced to 25 mm hence the correct answer of this question is d 25 mm question number 8 The maximum compressive strain in concrete in axial compression is a 0.0025, b 0.002, c 0.0035, d none of the above. Now, according to IS 456, whenever we are considering axial compression, the maximum compressive strain in concrete is to be taken as 0.002. Hence, the correct answer is b 0.002. 002 question number 9 if l is unsupported length and h is the least lateral dimension of the column then it can be designed as an axially loaded column only if a h is greater than 400 mm b h is greater than 0.12 l c both a and b above d none of the above now according to is 456 we know that minimum eccentricity is l by 500 plus h by 30 and it shall not exceed h by 20 so if you equate the two you will get uh, the value of h must be greater than 0.12 l and secondly if you equate h by 20 to 20 you will get 400 so both a and b must be satisfied then only we can Design that column as axially loaded. Hence, the correct answer is C. Both A and B above. Question number ten: The maximum area of longitudinal reinforcement of a column is A. 0.12 percent of AG, B. 0.8 percent of AG, C. 4 percent of AG, and D. 6 percent of AG. Now, the maximum area of compression reinforcement is. 6% of ag hence the correct answer is d 6% of ag question number 11 the minimum area of longitudinal reinforcement of a column is a 0.12% of ag b 0.8% of ag c 4% of ag and d 6% of ag as per a minimum as far as minimum area of longitudinal reinforcement of a column is concern it shall not be less than 0.8% of ag hence the correct answer of this question is b 0.8% of ag question number 12 the minimum diameter of bar for a longitudinal reinforcement of a column is a 12 mm b 16 mm c 10 mm d 8 mm now no need of any more explanation is required minimum diameter of the bar to be used in column is 12 mm hence the correct answer is a 12 mm question number 13 the spacing between the two longitudinal bars of a column measured along the periphery shall not exceed a 230 mm b 150 mm c 300 mm and d 100 mm in between the two bars the distance shall not exceed 300 mm as per is 456 hence the correct answer of this question is c 300 mm question number 14 the minimum number of longitudinal bars of a rectangular column is a 4 b 6 c 10 and d 8 minimum four bars are required hence the correct answer of this is a 4 Question number fifteen: The minimum number of longitudinal bars for a circular column is a four, b six, c eight, d none of the above. 
Now for circular column, minimum six bars are required. Hence the correct answer is B6. Question number 16. The functions served by longitudinal reinforcement in the column is R. A. To assist concrete in resisting compression. B. To impart ductility to the column. C. To resist tension developed due to bending. And D. All the above. Now A, B and C. All are the functions served by the longitudinal reinforcement. Hence the correct answer is D. All the above. Question number 17. The transverse reinforcement in the column shall be in the form of A. Vertical stirrups B. Lateral ties C. Closely spaced spirals and D. Option B or C. Now vertical stirrups are not provided as transverse reinforcement but lateral ties or closely spaced spirals can be provided. Hence the correct answer of this is D. Option B or C above. Question number 18. The functions served by transverse reinforcement in the column is R. A. To prevent buckling of main bars. B. To hold main bars in position. C. To prevent longitudinal splitting of concrete. And D. All the above. Now, like the previous one, here also A, B and C are the functions of transverse reinforcement. Hence, the correct answer is D. All the above. Question number 19. The diameter of bar for lateral ties is A. One fourth of the diameter of the largest longitudinal bar. B. 5 mm. C. Greater of A and B. D. None of the above. Now as per IS 456, we know that whenever we are calculating or selecting the diameter for lateral ties, it is calculated from two parameters first one one fourth of the diameter of long, largest longitudinal bar and b 5 mm whichever is greater of this has the correct answer of this is c greater of a and b question number 20 the minimum number of longitudinal bars of a square column of side 450 mm is a 4 b 8 c 6 d none of the above now, what is asked in the problem? Try to understand. In this question, the side of the column is given 450 mm. Now, if you provide only two bars for a side of 450 mm, the distance between two bars will exceed 300 mm. So, minimum three bars must be provided on one side. So, four bars in four corners and four bars in the middle of those corner bars. Hence, total eight bars are necessary to be provided. Hence, the correct answer of this question is B8. Question number 21. The pitch of lateral ties shall not exceed A. Least lateral dimension of the column B. 16 times smallest longitudinal bar C. 300 mm and D. Least of A, B and C. Now, pitch means distance between two consecutive lateral ties. It is calculated from three criteria. One is least lateral dimension of the column. Second is 16 times smallest longitudinal bar. C is 300 mm. And whichever is the least of these 1, 2, 3 is taken as the pitch. Hence, the correct answer of this is D, least of A, B and C. Question number 22. For a column carrying an axial load P, the area of footing is calculated as A. 1.1 times P divided by SBC of soil. B. 1.5 times P divided by SBC of soil. C. 1.5 into 1.1 times P upon SBC. And D. 1.5 P upon 2 times SBC. Now, while calculating the area of the footing, the working load of the column plus 10% of the load on the column as self weight of the footing. So 1.1 P divided by same bearing capacity of the soil will give us the area of footing. Hence the correct answer of this question is A 1.1 P upon SBC. Question number 23. The depth of the footing is governed by A, A 
bending moment criteria b deflection criteria c shear criteria and d bearing criteria now as far as the depth of the footing is concerned it is calculated for three different parameters one is for bending moment second is for one way shear and third is for two way shear okay now out of these three whichever is the greater is adopted as the depth of the footing and it is seen that whatever depth required for bending moment criteria is always less than that required for shear criteria hence the depth of the footing is governed by shear criteria the correct answer is c shear criteria question number 24 for the footing of rectangular or a square column the critical section for bending moment is a the vertical plane passing through footing at the face of the column b the vertical plane passing through the footing at a distance d by 2 from the face of the column c the vertical plane passing through the footing at the distance of d from the face of the column and d none of the above now according to is 456 the critical section for bending moment is always taken as the vertical plane passing through the footing at the face of the column hence the correct answer of this is a the vertical plane passing through the footing at the face of the column question number 25 for the footing of a circular column the critical section for bm is a the vertical plane passing through the footing at the face of the column b the vertical plane passing through the footing at the distance d by 2 from the face of the column c the vertical plane passing through footing at distance d from face of the column and d the vertical plane passing through footing at the side of a square inscribed in a circle now if the column is circular for a circular column all the surface is squared so you cannot take any plane at the face of the column therefore according to is 456 for a circular column you have to inscribe the square in that circle and whatever will be the side of the square the vertical plane passing through that side will be the critical section for bending moment hence the correct answer is the vertical plane passing through the footing at the side of square inscribed in a circle hence the correct answer is d question number 26 for the footing of rectangular or square column the critical section for punching shear is a vertical plane passing through footing at the face of the column b the vertical plane passing through footing at a distance d by 2 from the face of the column c the vertical plane passing through a footing at a distance d from the face of the column and d none of the above now punching shear means two way shear for two way shear it is always taken at a distance of d by 2 from the face of the column and the complete square or rectangle whatever the shape of column may be that particular cross section is taken along all those four sides at a distance d by 2 from the face of the column hence the correct answer of this is b the vertical plane passing through footing at a distance d by 2 from the face of the column question number 27 the footing of a rectangular or square column the critical section for one way shear is a the vertical plane passing through footing at the face of the column b the vertical plane passing through footing at the distance d by 2 from the face of the column c the vertical plane passing through footing at a distance d from the face of the column and d none of the above now for one way shear the section is taken at a distance d from the face of the column hence the correct answer is c the vertical plane passing through the footing at a distance d from the face of the column thank you